This video deals with corporate strategies and it should be viewed in the context of several other videos on the same topic or relate to the same topic that are available on the course. Um, so let's just start this one and deal with it. It's short video so deal with some of the key issues that come out of this. Um, the most basic question I suppose is what is corporate strategy? Well it's those strategies concerned with the broad and long-term questions of what businesses or what business the organization is in or wants to be in and what it wants to do with those businesses. So this is the consideration of direction. Where does the business want to be? Let's say in five years time. What sort of business do they want? Does, does the owner want? Does the management want? Where, where, where do they want to position the business? What is the, what's the type of business they want to be in? What do they want to make or do? Uh, who are the likely customers? What's the likely market? What's the product? What are they aiming at? This is the, the consideration of direction. Where does the business want to be? And if it doesn't have this sense of purpose, this sense of direction, it's just simply going to drift along. It's going to uh, move from one day to the next without any particular direction. It doesn't know if it's doing well or not because it doesn't have a benchmark. It doesn't have something to strive for. So corporate strategy is very important. It's very important that the business knows where it wants to be and what it wants to achieve it must have a target. It must be working to try and achieve that target. Task involves uh, well moves to enter a new business that could be one of the strategies perhaps enter a completely new business or set up a new business uh, perhaps a new line of production perhaps a new innovative product perhaps a a different way of making some existing product which is innovative and interesting to the customer. So it could be looking at a new business. So although the the person making the decision, the entrepreneur or the business person making the decision about corporate strategy is within a business, they may actually be planning a new business to replace the existing one. They may think that the, the changes are so significant, so profound, that a whole new business is required. They can't alter the existing business. A new business may be required. And this can happen sometimes when people are uh, jumping industry. If they're currently in construction, they're currently building houses, but it's very competitive and they're not making a lot out of it, but they're surviving. Perhaps people in the office want to uh, move into a new business where they supply raw materials to house builders. Or they, they take on marketing new houses. So they become a marketing company. They've got the background in building, so they know all about houses. So now they've become a marketing company. It's, it's a new direction. It's a new business. But it depends crucially on as I said earlier, the entrepreneur, the person who makes the decision, the person who's innovative and keen on change, it depends on the management structure and how flexible they are and how how willing they are to to move, to move into a new area of production, gain new expertise, start again almost. It could be looking at actions to boost the performance of the business. Uh, it could be looking at the existing business and thinking about reorganizing production, getting in some new machines, some specific machines to perform specific tasks, reorganizing the stores, uh, getting the, the workforce trained in new skills, uh, reorganizing the offices and streamlining the bureaucracy involved in the organization, streamlining the paperwork and the, the channels of communications. There are all sorts of actions that can be taken and these need to be worked out. They're in a sense part of the, the corporate strategy. 
the corporate strategy is to improve the efficiency of the organization. Perhaps there's a, a commitment to total quality management and the continual improvement of quality and of the processes within the organization. That could be it. So there are different strategies that can be followed. And they're always trying to capture the, the synergy amongst related businesses. Synergy are the advantages of combining tasks, of working together, of uh, benefiting from each other's existence. It's the, the old adage that 2 plus 2 equals 5. That uh, when, when one business cooperates with the other, the combined effect is more than each of them separately. They're able to share expertise, share knowledge. Uh, they're able to perhaps gain economies of scale. Uh, two companies may be able to uh, purchase, make single purchases and, and therefore able to negotiate better discounts or able to share transport systems or logistical systems. So the, the management are constantly looking for ways to capture synergy, capture linking parts of the business together to maximize the efficiency of the business. And that could be part of the, the corporate strategy to capitalize on synergy on, and the, the, the ways in which different parts can work together to cooperate to get a bigger output and a, a more efficient output as a consequence of working together. It's important to establish investment priorities and steering corporate resources into the most attractive units. Um, when investment is made, it shouldn't be made just blindly for the sake of it or the fact that it's a new machine and someone thinks it's a good idea to get it. This should be a, a calculated response to the, the development of a new machine or a new technology. Um, is it worthwhile? Will the machine be used continuously? Will the return on the machine justify its expenditure? Could the money, the resources spent on the machine have been better used elsewhere in the business. In other words, what's the opportunity cost of getting the machine? Opportunity cost is, is a term often used in economics. Opportunity cost means the cost of the next best alternative foregone. The next best alternative that we've given up. What's the cost? What have we just given up in order to get this machine? And what we've given up might have given a better return than the machine. So it's important to work out the internal rate of return, return on a machine to do proper investment appraisal. Look at the payback period. Look at the internal rate of return. Look at the net present value. Do as many calculations as possible. Try to estimate the, the benefits of the investment before making the investment. Don't just buy the machine and keep fingers crossed that there will be a return. That's not how it should be done. Single and multiple business organizations. Well, single business organizations, uh, these could be primarily in one industry. I say primarily, uh, many larger companies have uh, have an existence or a presence in, in many companies. They may have bought shares into many companies and may be involved in different markets in fact, but predominantly or primarily in one industry. Coca-Cola are in the beverage industry, mainly. Wrigley are in chewing gum, mainly. So um, the involvement is in one type of business, a single business. And that might be a part of the, the corporate strategy. Or it could be to have multiple businesses operating in more than one industry. So a company has got a foothold in different industries. Um, Pepsi, for example, snack food business, and also the beverage industry. So some companies are in different markets and operate in different industries. And, of course, that diversifies the risk. 
it, it enables them to offset some of the risks if one of the uh, parts of the, the business is not doing well the other part may compensate so it diversifies risks and, and for that reason it might be attractive and it may be a part of the corporate strategy for that very reason um, another example would be Philip Morris who's in the tobacco industry but also in the brewing industry and food processing so but as I said it, it cuts across uh, it depends on the strategy of the business and it's important to try and work out what the strategy is what are they trying to do what are they trying to achieve what's the purpose uh, what's the advantage and for that matter also you could look at what are the costs and what are the issues but what are the advantages it's the advantages that will surely determine whether they diversify in this way or whether they will stay within a single industry or whether they will stay a single company in a single industry corporate competitive and functional strategies well corporate strategy establishes the overall direction that the organization hopes to go so corporate strategy is the overarching strategy the one that tells the reader who accesses the corporate strategy tells the reader where the business is going to be in say five years time what are the aspirations of the management which direction do they want to go what do they want to achieve sometimes it's caught up in the mission statement the mission statement is just a, a statement of what the business is what it does and its credentials as a business normally it appears in the accounts of the company but sometimes you'll find it on the website as well but uh, generally speaking a mission statement might be short it's very short it could be 40 words 50 words maybe um, not very long some are very short so some might be just a couple of sentences um, some might be a paragraph a small paragraph um, <clears throat> so sometimes the the corporate uh, strategy can be worked out from the mission statement certainly there must be compatibility between the two um, so the type of business where it's going to be what it'll be making how it'll be structured where it'll be located um, types of product it'll produce uh, its relationship with its stakeholders uh, relationship with the environment its green credentials um, so all of this may be set out in the corporate strategy uh, but also commitment to quality um, continual improvement uh, the, the way it sees its customers and the types of relationships it wants with its customers so that can go into the corporate strategy that's a very broad strategy the competitive and functional strategies provides the means or mechanisms for making sure that the organization gets there so once the <coughs> direction has been set then some sort of modus operandi must be put in place how, how does the business get there how does the business enable uh, the, the corporate strategy to be fulfilled well this means reorganizing production reorganizing distribution reorganizing the offices getting more trained personnel and so on so what we're, we're doing here is operationalizing the strategy possible corporate strategy directions well moving the organization ahead that's one so one particular strategy is organizational growth that might be the motivation for corporate strategy to set out a way to show how the business will grow if the business is currently of a certain size they want to increase its size management like to be in charge of a bigger business they like to have growth and um, that might be a, a key objective and one which is reflected in the corporate strategy it could be keeping the business where it is but securing the business having organizational stability so not growing the business necessarily but 
uh, building up its strengths internally so when the market changes it's flexible it has a an agile working force workforce that's capable of um, meeting the new skill requirements and adjusting and the machines are also can be easily switched over and so it, it's developing a more secure presence within its current niche so it's organizational stability is the name of the game not necessarily getting bigger but just being more efficient more cautious and having more skills and better equipment and better able to see downturns better able to innovate the existing product and deal in that particular part of the market build up its reputation in that part of the market it could be reversing an organizational weaknesses or decline organizational renewal which means if the business has had a problem fixing it fixing the problem learning from the experience setting up systems to avoid downturns or problems like that in the future and moving ahead so we call it organizational renewal it means fixing the organization renewing the organization refreshing the organization and sometimes it happens not because of necessarily a downturn in demand for the product or uh, or something adverse happens to the business it could simply be that their continual um, commitment to quality and better customer satisfaction sometimes means slightly more radical changes to the product and hence more radical changes to the organization um, it's not as if innovations and customer requirements are always very gradual sometimes they're quite radical so perhaps the customers are looking for quite a big change in the product and therefore the, the organization must restructure quite radically this will be called organizational renewal so those are some ideas about corporate strategy and the issues associated with corporate strategy as I said there are several videos on this uh, available in on the course and in, in various parts of the course so it's important that you take those out and have a look at them and make notes about what we have read and add to your notes by your own general reading but that's all I'm going to deal with in this video so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching <laughs>